Hey guys, been quite a while. I'm Spectre. Today I want to talk to you about Sniper Core and I want to talk to you about what it is, what it does, and how I think you best use it, as well as demonstrate its capabilities so that you have a better idea of what this is. So this is Sniper Core, Spectre's new improved pneumatic exhaust ram. It is a fully aluminium HPA core designed with the same external dimensions as Supercore, but it is open bolt instead. So what open bolt means is that when the core is pressurized, the bolt is actually retracted. When you pull the trigger, the bolt extends, fires, and then will retract back to closed. There is a spring located inside the core. So much like Supercore, if you pull the bolt out by hand, it will retract by itself. This is a super cord, just for various differences. So as you can see, the outer body is the same size and length. So whatever builds you use for super cord, you will also be able to use for sniper core. The main difference externally is the bolt size. This bolt is a half inch OD bolt size with a 3 8 inner. This bolt is a 5 8 outer, which is made out of tube stock with a 13 mil in it, but reduced down on the stem. So, inside a situ, these cores will both do the, a similar function, but these are your receiver differences. So, this is your sniper core receiver, this is your super core receiver. The super core receiver is 16 mil in a diameter. As you can see, fits on there. This is 13.5, 17 30 seconds. It's on there. So these are not interchangeable. If you use this one, you will have to change the receiver. If you use sniper cores, if you use super cores, you will also have to change the receiver. You cannot use a sniper core receiver on super core. You cannot use a super core receiver on sniper core because it won't seal. What other differences do we have? So the Supercore receiver is by default threaded for jet thread barrels. So you will, you know, always be able to thread in 5.8 UNF. But given that the the world has changed since the outset of the Supercore, and I still love threaded barrels, the more commonly available barrels nowadays are worker barrels. So I have changed the design of the sniper core receiver to accommodate worker Harrier thread barrels or M16 by one. However, this is this is just my modified prototype barrel for testing. This is I've had to actually take most of the coating off of the thread because when I've tapped it, it is still a little tight for standard threaded barrels. The that locks up there. That's not going to do what you want it to do. However, when we go into production, I'm aiming for this M16 thread to be instantly compatible with no modification to a stock worker, Harrier, Seagull, whatever barrel. These, th these barrels should screw in nice and clearly, nice and easily, no problems at all. Let's get on to some function. So, I've got a test rig here, and I'll just showcase a super core. This is at 100 PSI, just for the ease of this gauge. This gauge is a little bit hard to read, so I've just moved it up to the first. So, super cool, we all know what happens, you know, air fills the chamber, and when you pull the trigger, super cool extends, when you pull the trigger, super cool retracts. So, if you were to do the exact same thing with sniper cool, and I apologize in advance to headphone users, turn your volume down now, I'll give you a second. This is going to peak the mic if Supercore didn't. So sniper core is in. I'll turn the air on. Yep, so. Now, what's interesting about sniper core is air is currently in the chamber, but it's fully stable in here. There's no more air running in, and the firing chamber is completely closed off. So I can do this. That's full extension right there, and it's still not firing. Quite proud of that. It's an isolated chamber that is only open when firing. 
So let's pull the trigger and see if you can see it in slow motion. I'm probably not going to do a slow motion of this, you're just going to have to take my word for it. As you can see, pull the trigger. The diaphragm in the back moves back, opens up the main firing chamber, bolt extends, unseats itself from the stemmed uh, o-ring, and then all the air exits at the front, and then the force of the spring sends it home. So that's sniper core. And as you can see, they're both perfectly compatible with a standard MJV03 firing system. This is literally all it is. It's just bottle, MJV03, core. And you can arrange those fittings, like you can arrange that airline to, as long as it goes in the inlet, out the outlet, to the core, you will have a working core system. That's it. That's all you need. So, now let's get to functions. So, the differences between these two are that there is less air inside this than there is in this, so it does require a higher operating pressure to achieve similar velocities. What Supercore can do at about 50 psi, the Sniper Core can do about 90, 100 psi. I will take this to the chronograph now, I will put it all in creme, and we'll get some numbers for you. I don't actually have any range inside this house for me to do accuracy tests with this thing, so it's going to be a bit um, hit and miss. For the tests, I will be using the Sniper Core setup. Wrong thing. I'll, for this test, I'll be using the Sniper Core with a 210mm worker Seagull barrel with my jet thread cut in on the end, simply because I have all of my other muzzle devices using jet threads since Supercore, and I don't need to buy more. So I've just I've just got this threaded now, but you should see similar results with a similar product. I will be using the orange, or well, not orange, I will be work using the worker B car, and we will work from that. Okay, so I'm using Creme, De La Creme, set to gauge pressure about 100 psi, and let's see how she goes. So I'm using full Talon mag of Worker Gen 3s. Two forty one, two oh six, two eleven, two eleven, one forty four, two forty nine, one fifty three, two forty three, one sixty eight, two seventeen, two twenty four, one ninety, one sixty one, one eighty nine, two twenty two, one eighty one, one ninety eight, one sixteen, that was terrible. 170, empty. Okay, so this time I'm just going to try a magazine of Sabre 1.3 gram tea darts. I did say I was going to do those in a review, and I'm still going to do these in a review separately to this. But I just figure that while I'm here, I might as well get some data out for them. Uh, same settings as before, nothing has changed. 235. 226, 246, 252, 248, 249, 244, 244, 253, 247, 255, 258, 254, 245, 224, 231, 259, 221, 213. So, what do we think? Compared to Supercore, it's not really a comparable core, in my opinion. Like, I've made both these cores, and based on the data I've got from them, I actually think that they fulfill two completely different roles. Supercore is much more of a, like, at that pressure, you're going to be going longer range. You're going to need a longer barrel, you're going to run it in a DMR-style blaster. 
Sniper Corps, not exactly what I call getting up and personal with people, but sitting at that nice mid range and setting it down range because the cycle speed of the core is that much faster than Super Core. Super Core unfortunately relies on, you know, the, the pull and the retract of the, um, of the core to complete a cycle. Sniper Core does that all by itself when you pull the trigger, so you don't need to think about that. So what you basically have is like a rapid strike pusher worth of a HPA engine. Or, you know, given that it was inspired by paintball tech, you've basically got a paintball engine that fires nerf darts. And that's how I would be using it. I'd be setting it up for these, you know, not CQB engagement blasters, but like a mid-range, high-velocity, high-rate-of-fire kind of blaster. I'd be setting it up in a super recon for like quick taps down range. I'd be setting it up in something, you know, like an ADHD or creme de la creme, specifically so that you've got that short, sharp, quick tap trigger where you are just sending darts down range as fast as you can pull the trigger. And that's where I think it's going to do really well. I think that the high pressure inside the core compared to Super Corp is actually going to work in our favour, despite it being louder. I think it's going to work in our favour for a much more reliable high, cy high cycle speed. Like, you're not worried about flow rates at its bottom because you're nowhere near its bottom pressure. Like, the, the lower end of Sniper Core's functional pressure is like 60 PSI. So you're still going to be doing something. It's probably not going to be anywhere near as reliable as at that 100 mark. But you are going to be doing things at a at a higher like high response higher speed like this is the kind of thing that you know in the US if you're still doing your ion rush stuff like that you'd be absolutely ideal for that but if you're trying to do a DMR style of role you might be you might be out of luck i don't really design this core with DMR in mind, despite its name being Sniper, as the acronym, Spectre's new improved pneumatic exhaust ram, I don't believe it's useful for a sniper role. I believe it's more for a, you know, a DMR rifle at best, but like, I don't really think that. I more think that it's more useful for your, your SMG, your, your high range, your long range SMG is like, whatevs. You've got rapid strikes. I'm so old now. I don't even know what the printed meta looks like. You know, FDLs were my day. But it's like you've got high rate of fire blasters nowadays and in flywheels. You've got, you know, much better consistency. And with a field full of, like, HC Dianas, this is going to be that blaster that keeps you out of the range of the Dianas. That kind of thing. If you've got people that are running like, you know, your 150 FPS flywheels, your 200 FPS flywheels, you're still going to be keeping them out of range. That's the kind of goal I had in mind with this kind of blaster is like, you don't have to, you will be reloading almost as quickly as they will, but you need to keep them off your case. That's what I think. That's the kind of build I'd be doing with this style of thing. That's how I build Krem. And I... I do believe in the potential of this core. We're working on a production run now, and I'm hoping that, you know, in the next couple of months, people will start receiving their sniper cores and start building their sniper cores, and we'll really start getting to see what people do, what other people have in mind for this core. I'm an open, I'm a, I've always wanted to build a open bolt core, and now that we're at this stage and it's starting to be really consistent, I'm really hopeful that given how much easier it is to manufacture than Supercore, I can actually do multiple productions of runs with this really easily. I do believe in its potential, and I really look forward to taking it as far as I can take it.